Well, here I am at the Australia-China Summit, and I'm with Scott Gustetta. Scott is the Managing Director of Aspirion, and Aspirion's an independent consultant in aviation in Australia, but you also work in other countries in the world, and I know you've got a very significant team on business. I just wanted to ask you, Scott, um, this has been a very interesting summit over the last few days. What do you think that means for Australia and China and you know the aviation connections, I suppose, and the industry between both? Look, I think the uh, summit that's occurred is basically going to help fuel and continue the momentum that's been happening for the last uh, few years in building. As you know, the, the China-Australia market is growing at a very rapid pace, over 20% a year. Um, this sort of summit helps create engagement and dialogue between each side um, that will really just continue to build that momentum. And who do you think the major players that will be in that space? In terms of airlines? Yes. Well, obviously, China Southern is leading the way. They've got a strategy to certainly be number one in Australia. They already are. Um, it certainly cover as many points as possible as quickly as possible and be the first mover in the market. I don't think the other Chinese airlines are sitting by idly, um, but they are sort of... Um, China Southern certainly has the lead. And where does Qantas fit into all this, or maybe even Jetstar? Well, I think both have desires to grow in China, but at the moment are quite limited in terms of their options with respect to growth. The traffic rights are there. Um, the challenge is actually getting uh, commercially attractive slot times at the key airports in China, um, which uh, really prohibits them from mounting a, a viable service. I think if they had those, you'd see them there very quickly. And do they have an equipment issue as well, or is that is it mainly slot times and so on? No, I think they have the equipment. They can do it just fine with an A330. There's certainly uh, some obvious opportunities. I mean, we're here in Cairns. Um, you know, Jetstar has a base here. They go north to Japan. You know, why not China? Um, it's it's more about what time do you arrive in China, and you know, a three o'clock in the morning arrival and a four o'clock in the morning departure isn't something the customer is going to buy. That's quite an interesting comment as well, though, because I was about to ask you which model sort of fits the China marketplace. Is it the Jetstar model or is it the Qantas model? Well, look, I think at the moment distribution is obviously a big issue with China, particularly in the Chinese market. It's, it's, it's a, there's a learning curve to be had there. It's not it's similar to what's happened in Japan um, in the sense that getting the distribution model right in Japan moving into more of the traditional way of distributing has presented challenges for Jetstar. They've obviously learned from those challenges and been able to overcome them. I think they'll be able to apply some of those learnings in China, but China is not the same as Japan either. So the full service model works well with China. The, the agents are um, mainly bricks and mortar at, at this stage, and um, and even the, the the background back end office technology is is pretty archaic as far as um, interfaces go. So um, I think that uh, it's going to be very hard. It's not, it's, it's not a easy. We're just going to go sell a ticket. Yeah. Mm. Do you think that um, Virgin Australia, or also, I mean, interestingly, Strategic has emerged as sort of increasingly as a player, particularly at this conference as well, or summits as well. Do you think they might be looking at China? Well, I, we know Strategic is, but what about Virgin Australia? Look, I don't, I mean, I, I imagine every airline looks at everything. Yeah. Um, I don't think that China would be a priority for Virgin Australia at the moment. I think, uh, as, as John Borghetti's made quite clear, he's looking to grow his network through international alliances. As you know, this week he signed his alliance with Singapore Airlines. That'll help better access to China, but it is a Southeast Asian focus. I guess the next question will be, what is the Northeast Asian solution? Um, but seeing Virgin Australia fly to China in their own right in the near term is probably not likely. And then the strategic side of things? Well, strategic, as you know, recently received traffic rights to fly to China. I don't think they've quite decided where in China they'd fly, and I'm not quite sure how well they've thought through the distribution angle. So it'll be interesting to watch that space. The Virgin Australia and uh, Singapore Airlines uh, alliance is really very, very significant. It's also a good sort of cross into another question I'd like to ask you. Um, the global aviation business, and particularly for, for Australian operators, for example, particularly Qantas, is very challenging at this time with rocket fuel prices. Uh, Qantas also has a very high cost space. In your view as an independent consultant, what does all that mean for us in Australia and for the aviation business in Australia? And do you have any predictions about what is, you know, how it's going to go in the future? Look, it continues to grow. It's um, a cyclical industry, as we all know. It has its ups and downs. They're always going to be there. Um, and uh, depending on where you're sitting in the industry, sometimes uh, you know, the ebbs and flows will benefit you and sometimes they won't. I think there's some natural hedges out there. You've got some challenges in Australia at the moment with respect to the exchange rate. The strong dollar is good for a lot of reasons. Um, it's also an inhibitor to inbound tourism. So if you're focused on the inbound market, your business is going to be hurting right now. But if outbound is, is your area of strength, um, you're going to be pretty happy.
Alan Joyce at Qantas and the chairman have made it very clear that they are singing from the same hymn sheet. There is no split between them, um, but there are going to be some very significant reorganizational changes in Qantas. Now, you know, we know that Jetstar is a highly profitable part of Qantas, and the remainder of Qantas is probably less, well, is significantly less profitable, including the international. What do you think those changes might be? Do you have any guesses? Oh, I think that the organization is always evolving. So, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, it's always a case of actually seeing what works and who the personalities are. Um, no, and I wouldn't, wouldn't go so far to venture, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to push you further on that. I mean, do you actually see more um, Jetstar-style operations internationally um, and then Qantas, you know, sticking on the premium routes and uh, premium service only? Well, Qantas certainly is the premium brand. It's a full-service brand. It's going to focus on routes that basically have uh, business traffic uh, primarily and the yields to support the cost base. I mean, the whole reason for Jetstar is to offer a lower cost base solution with respect to the Qantas Group that enables the Qantas Group to go into markets where the yields don't support the high cost base that Qantas has. So, it's sure, the growth opportunities out there are going to be in the uh, lower yield end of the market. So, I could certainly see where that creates a lot of growth opportunity for Jetstar. If Qantas is successful in changing its cost base and whether that's looking at, you know, setting up a full service sub carrier based in Asia, then, you know, that'll enable them to grow as well. So, but as we know, dealing with the uh, the labor side of things isn't uh, an easy, easy, easy situation, but hopefully both sides will recognize the growth opportunities out there if they can figure out a way to work together. Yeah, they're thorny issues, and I mean, particularly, say, the pilots at the moment demanding higher rates of pay and so on, and, uh, and the the problem is those cost bases are really not sustainable in this current marketplace and uh, you know you mentioned the possibility of an Asian base I mean that's culturally I suppose or politically is going to be very challenging for Qantas isn't it? Uh, it you know culturally and as far as organization goes obviously uh, Australia I mean as far as the nation goes as well. goes yes well I mean I think the nation is, 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 is growing up in the sense of recognizing that it is a global environment airlines do have to compete and it's not always going to be you know, Qantas uh, of old, you know, it's got to, Qantas has to be able to evolve and change and adapt and, 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 and compete with, you know, its competitors who are from other countries. You know, banks in this country have, have ownership that come from other countries. Um, telecommunications, I mean, Optus, you know, Singaporean-owned company now, but it's still a, a, a nationwide recognized brand. So why should airlines be any different? Scott Gustetta, thank you very much indeed for your time today. Okay, great. Thank you.